Welcome, dear students, to today's lesson. Unit 10. Culture shock. Let's get familiar with the vocabulary list. I am using the Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary. Vocabulary list. Culture. The customs and beliefs, art, way of life, and social organization of a particular country or group. Shock. A strong feeling of surprise, especially something unpleasant. Foreign. In or from a country that is not your own. Unfamiliar. That you do not know or recognize. Custom. An accepted way of behaving or of doing things in a society. Symptom. A sign that something exists. Indication. Initially. At the beginning. Familiar. Well known to you. Knowing something very well. Honeymoon. The period of time at the start of a new activity. When nobody is criticized and people feel enthusiastic. Frustration. A feeling of anger or annoyance caused by being unable to do something. Romanticize. To make something seem more attractive than it really is. Adjustment. A small change made to something in order to correct or improve it. Comfortable. Making you feel physically relaxed in a pleasant way. Adaptation. The process of changing something to suit a new situation. Acceptance. The act of agreeing with something and approving it. Contribute. To give something to be one of the causes of something. Solution. A way of solving a problem or dealing with a difficult situation. Answer. Balance. A situation in which different things exist in equal, correct or good amounts. Identify. To recognize somebody or something. To find or discover somebody or something. Relief. The act of removing or reducing pain, anxiety, etc. Invaluable. Extremely useful. Similar. Almost the same as somebody or something else. Interconnected. Joined and related. Incredibly. Extremely. Unbelievably. Let's start with the reading passage. Culture shock is an experience people may have when they move to a foreign country with a new cultural environment, which is different from their own. These unfamiliar surroundings can lead to a feeling of being a little bit lost. For example, when a student starts studying abroad, he or she experiences different things in custom, dress and food. There are many symptoms of transition shock, including anger, boredom, extreme homesickness, eating disturbances, and excessive critical reactions to host culture. Sometimes the symptoms last just a few days, but more often they last weeks or even months. People experiencing culture shock usually move through four stages. They will initially have the honeymoon stage, which is characterized by a positive feeling that everything is new and exciting. Then there will be the frustration stage. It may be marked by rejection of the new culture, as well as romanticizing one's home culture. But then, with some time and perhaps help from the locals, People will start the adjustment stage and begin to feel more familiar and comfortable with the new environment. Adaption and acceptance is the final stage, which contributes to the successful integration. In fact, there is no magic solution for dealing with culture shock. 
Everyone has to find his or her own balance between the values of home country and those of the host country. In other words, knowing what culture shock is and being able to identify your feelings is a relief. This experience shapes one's personality and gives an invaluable lesson that despite our differences, we are all similar and interconnected on this incredibly beautiful planet. Let's move to the vocabulary question. Exercise number A. Match the words with their definitions. Frustration. Homesickness. Disturbance. Invaluable. Adjustment. Integration. Let's match these words with their right definitions. Frustration. An unhappy and worried mental state. Homesickness. A strong, sad feeling of missing one's home when physically away. Disturbance. The feeling of being annoyed because you cannot control a situation. Invaluable. Extremely useful. Adjustment. A change in the way that someone behaves or thinks. Integration. The process of fitting into a community. Moving on to exercise B. Answer the following questions about the text. What is culture shock? If you go back to page number 99, you can see that culture shock is an experience people may have when they move to a foreign country with a new cultural environment, which is different from their own. Question number two. Mention transition shock symptoms. Anger, boredom, extreme homesickness, eating disturbances, and excessive critical reactions to host culture. Number three. How long do these symptoms last? Sometimes the symptoms last just few days, but more often they last weeks or even months. Question 4. What are the four stages of culture shock? They are honeymoon stage, frustration stage, adjustment stage, adaptation and acceptance stage. In which stage do people begin to feel more confident and relaxed in a new cultural environment and why? In the adjustment stage, because people with some time and perhaps help from the locals will start and begin to feel more familiar and comfortable with the new environment. How can people reduce the impact of culture shock? Everyone has to find his or her own balance between the values of home country and those of the host country. Exercise C, page number 101. Make a list of disadvantages of living abroad. For each one, try to find an advantage. The disadvantages. People misunderstand what you're trying to say. The advantages. It is an opportunity to learn a new language. Another disadvantage. You will miss your mother's food. The advantage. You should learn to cook by yourself. Another disadvantage. Living in a foreign country is costly. The advantage. You will have to find a part-time job. To the vocabulary. Idioms. Take a look at these idioms in red. To have a wide face. This is an idiom. For example, people with white faces can supposedly be more successful in life. The meaning is to have many friends and be well liked. Actions or words that are disrespectful may cause somebody to lose face. This is where we get the English term losing face from. So losing face means doing 
something disrespectful, embarrassing. On the other hand, saving face is when you do something to prevent yourself or someone else from being embarrassed. The next idiom, to give someone pumpkins. Do you know pumpkins, the winter fruit? For example, I trusted him, but unfortunately, he gave me pumpkins. The meaning, to reject somebody or turn someone down. To break bread with. For example, I have known her for a long time now. We broke bread together. The meaning, to be close friends and have a meaningful connection. We have the three idioms, to have a white face, to give someone pumpkins, and to break bread with. Let's match the underlined phrases with their meanings. I think we will be good friends. We both have a white face. You have to study hard in order not to give your parents pumpkins. You can't break bread with everyone you meet in life. Have a white face means to be well liked. To give your parents pumpkins means to turn them down. To break bread with means to be a close friend with somebody. Exercise number B. Do you know any more idioms in different languages? Does this picture ring a bell? Lend an ear, which means listen. I'm all ears. I'm all attentive. The walls have ears. Maybe we could be overheard. So be careful what you say. Let's move on to Arabic idioms. Minayuni, which means I'd be happy to help. Tukburni. It means you hope to die before your loved ones. Ongoing assessment. Choose the correct idiom in the following sentence. She has many friends. Everyone at work likes her. She gives everyone pumpkins. She lost her face. She breaks bread with everyone. Or she has a white face. Which do you think is the right answer? Yes, she has a white face. He invited her to the party, but she turned him down. She said no. Which idiom suits this situation? She has a white face? She gave him pumpkins? She broke bread with him? Or she lost her face? She turned him down means she gave him pumpkins. Let's move on to the pronunciation. Listen and practice. Notice how the intonation rises and falls in questions. What's the time? Where do you live? Are you going to the party tonight? Have you got a pen? You're French, aren't you? He's very tall, isn't he? You're French, aren't you? Your train leaves at six, doesn't it? Do you prefer reading poetry or prose? Would you rather be a doctor, psychologist or an engineer? But what is intonation? If you look it up in the dictionary, intonation is the rise and fall of the voice in speaking, especially as this affects the meaning of what is being said. Somehow, it is the tone of speech. Intonation in questions. In WH questions like what, where, how, when, how long, how far, etc., we use falling intonation. The speaker's voice rises, then falls on the last content word. If being asked for the first time, or asking for information we don't know. What's the time? 
Where do you live? Notice here we have a WH question and the intonation is rising then falling. It's a falling intonation because it's a WH question. Number two, in yes no questions, we use rising intonation. The speaker's voice rises on the last content word or phrase. If we are checking information we think we already know, our voice goes up at the end. Are you going to the party tonight? Have you got a pen? Notice how the intonation rises in the end of this question because it's a yes no question. Number three, question tags expecting confirmation. We use falling intonation. You're French, aren't you? He's very tall, isn't he? In this case, we use falling intonation because we are expecting confirmation. Number four, question tags showing less certainty. We use rising intonation. You're French, aren't you? Your train leaves at six, doesn't it? In this case, the question tag has a rising intonation because the speaker is less certain and wants an answer. The last case, number five, in questions that offer choices, the speaker's voice rises on the first choice and falls on the last choice. Do you prefer reading poetry or prose? Would you rather be a doctor, psychologist or an engineer? Notice here we have options or choices. So the intonation rises on the first option, then falls on the last option. Let's do the following exercise. Read the questions below. Does the intonation rise or fall at the end? Listen and check. Do you like pop music? It's a yes no question, so it's a rising intonation. Would you like to walk? Or take the bus. A falling intonation because we have choices here. The movie was great, wasn't it? Here the speaker is seeking confirmation. So she's using falling intonation in the question tag. What time does the museum open? A WH question. So it's a falling intonation. People use first names here, don't they? Again, this is a question tag. The speaker here is seeking confirmation, so she's using falling intonation. Let's move to the workbook, page number 82. Draw the correct arrow, rising or falling, above each question. Then practice the questions. Number one, your parents are from Italy, aren't they? Number two, do you prefer to study nursing or education? Number three, have you talked to a professor? Number four, where was the article published? Number five, would you rather have tea, coffee or cappuccino? Let's move back to the student's book. Page number 103, models, obligation or lack of obligation. Exercise A, complete the sentences with should, shouldn't, must, mustn't, have to, don't have to, or doesn't have to. Number one, use, must, to express personal obligation. Use have to to express general obligation. A law, a rule at school or at work. Use should to give an opinion or a recommendation. Number four, shouldn't expresses negative advice. Don't have to or doesn't have to is used to express absence of obligation. Number six, mustn't means you are not allowed to do this. It is against the rules. 
you can find plenty of explanations and examples in the workbook, page number 83. Page number 84 in the workbook. Chris is going to Carstairs College in Scotland. Miranda is already studying there. Cross out the modal verb forms that are wrong. So let's read only the correct modal verbs. Can I ask you a few questions about Carstairs? Of course. Do I have to wear a uniform? No. But you must dress smartly. You can't wear jeans. Should I take my laptop computer with me? No, you don't have to. You have to write all your essays by hand. What? I don't have to use email? No, I'm afraid not. Carstairs is very old-fashioned. Anyway, when are you leaving? I don't have a ticket for the train this evening. I should have reserved the seat, though. I have to stand all the way to Scotland. Should I give you a ring later and see how things are going? Sure. Oh, another thing. Can I use my mobile phone at college? Yes, don't worry. But you must switch it off during the school day. Okay. Can you give me any more advice? Yes. You should visit the lake near the college. It's beautiful. Exercise C. Look at the signs and complete the sentences with mustn't or don't have to. Remember, mustn't is when something is not allowed. And don't have to is used when you want to show freedom. The first instruction is in the library. No talking. Please leave books on tables. The second instruction in the antique shop. Please feel free to come in. No eating. Instruction 3. Entry possible 30 minutes before the concert. No late arrivals allowed. Sentence number 1. You talk in the library. You are not allowed to talk in the library. You mustn't talk in the library. Number 2. Put the books back on the shelf. It's unnecessary to put the books back on the shelf. It's written on the wall. You don't have to. You don't have to put the books back on the shelf. Number three. You go in. Feel free to go in. Please come in. You're welcome. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. You don't have to go in. Number four. You eat inside. It's not allowed to eat inside. You mustn't eat inside. Number five. You arrive half an hour early. It's written. Entry possible, so you can. You can arrive half an hour early, but it's not a must. You don't have to arrive half an hour early, but you can if you want to. Number six. You arrive late. No late arrivals allowed. It's not possible. You mustn't arrive late. Exercise D. Here is the work plan for the information office at Heathrow Airport for the last weekend. If someone didn't work, there is a comment about the reason. From the information in the table, write complete sentences using had to, didn't have to, or should have, and the words in brackets. Remember, all these obligation modal verbs are used in the past. Let's start. We have the table of information and the names of the workers and their reason of absence. For example, Jenny on Saturday. Let's take a look at Jenny. Jenny had to work on Saturday. What about Colin? Colin didn't have to work on Saturday. Carol? Uh-huh. Carol should have worked on Sunday, but she was ill, so she didn't go to work. She was absent. Number one. 
Colin on Sunday. Colin had to work on Sunday. Number two, Joanne. Joanne didn't have to work on Sunday. Derek. Derek should have worked on Sunday, but he was ill, so he didn't go to work. Mary didn't have to work on Saturday. Brian. Brian should have worked on Saturday, but he was ill. Daniel. Daniel had to work on Saturday. Joanne should have worked on Saturday, but she was ill. Derek didn't have to work on Saturday. In order to get a better understanding, let's go back to the student's book, page number 103. Exercise B. Now complete the sentences with the correct modal verb and match them with the correct rules. These are the same rules that we read earlier. Let's match each rule with a suitable example. Number one. In Britain, you have to drive on the left. Driving on the left is a rule, is a law in Britain. So it's have to. Have to is used to express obligation, especially when it is a law or a rule at school or at work. Number two. He has a backache. He shouldn't carry heavy things. With rule number four, shouldn't expresses negative advice. Sentence three. I'm very hungry. I must eat something. Must is used to express personal obligation. It's not a rule and it's not a law. Exercise four. You mustn't use your phone in a gas station. This is a written instruction in the gas station. You are not allowed to use your mobile phone in a gas station. You mustn't use your phone. Sentence 5. Tom doesn't study enough. He should study harder. Should is used to give an opinion or a recommendation. Sentence 6. If he has a credit card, he doesn't have to pay for something in cash. He can use the card. He doesn't have to, is used to express absence of obligation. It means that he has the option of paying in cash or in credit card. To the final grammar exercise. Exercise C. A squash club in London has decided that it is important for all club members to do these things. Wear sport shoes and clean clothes. Have a shower. Pay before you play. Finish on time. Remember that these are instructions for the club members to obey. They don't have an option. But these things are not allowed. Disturb other players. Take club balls home. Eat or drink outside the canteen. These things are not allowed. They can't do these things. Let's start with the first one. You mustn't disturb other players, but you don't have to be silent. You can talk, of course, you are free to talk, but uh, you cannot, but you cannot disturb other players. You mustn't disturb other players. You must finish on time, but you don't have to start on time. You are free to start whenever you want. You don't have to play with club balls, but if you do, you mustn't take them home. You are not allowed to take them home. Number four. You mustn't eat or drink outside the canteen, but you don't have to buy your food in it if you don't want to. You are not allowed to eat or drink outside the canteen. You mustn't eat. And you have the freedom to buy your food from the canteen or bring it from home. You must have a shower. And you must wear clean clothes. Everyday English. Expressing surprise. Read and listen to the following dialogue. Jack's got a new job. A new job? 
Good for him. Apparently he's promoted. Is he? How amazing. Yes, he told me that last week. He's going to work in the main office. In the main office? That's interesting. Yes, he's travelling to Spain tomorrow. Oh, that's incredible. What about his family? They're travelling with him too. Are you serious? Sure, they'll have a flat in the centre of Madrid. You're kidding. I'll call him now. Take a look at the phrases in bold. These expressions are used to express surprise. Take a look at them. We're going to use them in the coming exercise. Assessment. Choose the correct surprise expression for the following situation. Your brother has won the lottery. Has he? You're kidding. I need your help urgently. Is it necessary to book in advance? Which do you think is the correct answer? Yes. Has he? You're kidding. A friend won a school competition last week. I'm sorry about what happened. Hmm, it sounds a bit risky to me. Oh, that's incredible. Yes, it's incredible. Your friend's family is going to spend their holiday on the beach. Which do you think is the most suitable surprise expression? You hurt my feelings? Are you serious? How amazing! Oh, well, I think it's frosty today. Yes. Are you serious? How amazing! Listening. Exercise A. Read the saying and discuss the questions. When in Rome, do as Romans do. What do you think this phrase means? It means when visiting a foreign land, follow the customs of those who live in it. The famous footballer Cristiano Ronaldo gives us a great example of a person who can adapt to the new culture. Listen to a radio show about different customs around the world. Our show today is about different costumes around the world. In the United States, as a way of showing gratitude for waiter service, it is expected that people leave between 10 to 20% of the bill on tips. In South Korea, employees in the food service industry are given fair wages, and it is insulting to attempt to tip them. In many cultures, it is a right to ask for salt to add to your food, but if you are dining with friends in Egypt, keep in mind to avoid asking for salt. It is taken as an insult to the host, as Egyptians take it to mean that you don't like the taste of the food. Don't show up on time in Venezuela. Looks like Venezuelans aren't like the British people, are very punctual and make a great effort to arrive on time. Reaching on time is considered rude in Venezuela, and it is recommended to reach at least 50 minutes later than the schedule time. Early or in-time guests are viewed as being too eager or even greedy. Avoiding using red ink in South Korea is based on their history and costumes. Red ink was used to write down names of dead people on the family register, whereas in Mexico it is better to stick to the traditional red rose rather than a yellow rose, which means death in Mexican culture. Match the country with a suitable behavior. In the United States, it is one of the customs to leave between 10 to 20 percent of the bill in tips as a sign of gratitude. In South Korea, it's better to avoid using red ink for writing names of your friends. Because in the South Korean history, they used to write the names of the dead people in red ink in the family registers. In Egypt, it's socially not acceptable to ask for salt when dining. In Venezuela, it is better to arrive later than originally planned. In Britain, it is important to arrive on time. They are very punctual. In Mexico, please don't gift a yellow rose because it is related to death in their culture. Exercise C. Listen again and write the names of countries with contrasting customs. In the United States, as a way of showing gratitude for waiter service, it is expected that people leave between 10 to 20 percent of the bill on tips. In South Korea, employees in the food service industry are given fair wages and it is insulting to attempt to tip them. In many cultures, it is a right to ask for salt to add to your food, but if you are dining with friends in Egypt, 
keep in mind to avoid asking for salt. It is taken as an insult to the host, as Egyptians take it to mean that you don't like the taste of the food. Don't show up on time in Venezuela. Looks like Venezuelans aren't like the British people, are very punctual and make a great effort to arrive on time. Reaching on time is considered rude in Venezuela, and it is recommended to reach at least 15 minutes later than the schedule time. Early or in-time guests are viewed as being too eager or even greedy. Avoiding using red ink in South Korea is based on their history and costumes. Red ink was used to write down names of dead people on the family register. Whereas in Mexico, it is better to stick to the traditional red rose rather than a yellow rose, which means death in Mexican culture. This is the end of the lesson. Thank you.